Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kunal Gandhi, and uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about um, uh, Adopt and des Designate for Managing Mission Critical eBay and PayPal uh, DNS. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, this talk was actually going to be done by Bharat uh, and Ron. Uh, they couldn't make it, so I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do the talk instead of them. Most of the material uh, on the slide uh, they have worked on, so I've kept their name on the slides. But uh, um, so let's uh, look at uh, the agenda for today. So first of all, what we'll look at is um, uh, before we before designate uh, PayPal and eBay were using uh, OpenStack. We had integrated with OpenStack, but uh, before de before that, uh, before designate was started, we integrated OpenStack with our own proprietary DNS service. So we'll look briefly at what uh, what those features were. Um, then what we'll do is basically we'll look at um, uh, we'll do a designate overview on what components designate has. We will look at the designate architecture, uh, and uh, then. When we had to migrate from um, from our proprietary DNS as a service to designate, we had to make enhancements to designate so that it meets our business needs. So we will look at a list of those enhancements, um, and then when we deployed designate to production, we ran into a few challenges. We would like to share those challenges with you. And uh, towards the end, what we'll do is we'll look at um, uh, some future work that. Uh, we need to work with the community on uh, to uh, in, in one of the up, in the upcoming designate releases, uh, so that uh, designate can be um, uh, this production ready for uh, for uh, the other companies as well. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the proprietary DNS as a service that we had at eBay and PayPal, which uh, this was developed a few years ago. It was an in-house system written in Java. Uh, it was a RESTful API. Um, for DNS management, um, uh, the way the DNS as a service was designed is it was designed to work with multiple uh, providers, and uh, the way we had designed DNS as a service uh, a few years ago is uh, the source of truth for uh, the DNS as a service was actually the DNS uh, server itself. It didn't store any data locally, so uh, so that was the source of truth. Um, the DNS servers were their source of truth. Uh, designate overview. So now uh, let's look at how designate is uh, and their components. So designate has various components. Uh, one of the first component designate has is the API. Uh, this component is uh, responsible for taking all the API call requests uh, from clients and from Horizon. Um, designate is central is the central piece, as the name suggests. It's actually the central piece of the system, which is responsible to make changes on the DNS uh, servers, the name servers, and the database. Designate sync is actually a component that is uh, a framework designed uh, to add notification handlers on top, so that it can listen to notification from various other components in OpenStack and take actions accordingly. Uh, then there's a storage component uh, in Designate, which uh, which is basically the central component talks to the storage component. Um, it's the underlying database that's the source of truth for designate. And the backend uh, component is basically your name server, the DNS name server uh, that has the data. So um, these are the various components in designate. So let's look at uh, an architecture overview of how designate looks like. Uh, and this is the Juno release um, and the ISOs release as well. Uh, the Kilo release, a few things have changed, uh, but we will look at the Juno release and how it looks. So um, in, in, this, in this picture here, if you notice, uh, the middle section has uh, the API component, it has the sync component, it has the central component, and uh, there is a queue in the middle. That's the, uh, that's the RapidMQ. So, what, so the API component is the component that takes all your API calls, the customer API calls. Uh, so this. Uh, this will handle various calls like your e-records, uh, your reads, your writes, uh, your deletes, and your updates. So that will take all those calls. And uh, it will also take calls from Horizon. Um, the other thing, uh, if you, so, so that's the API component. So and in the bottom, you see there is a sync component. So that component is basically responsible for uh, listening to all the notifications that are on the bus. Uh, uh, so, it, so the sync component will basically have a bunch of consumers uh, 
to consume all the messages from the bus and what uh, and then the right next to the sync component is the central component is basically the central component is uh, responsible for consuming messages uh, that is on the MQ uh, and uh, it will make changes through DNS and a DB. So a typical workflow is uh, if let's say for instance someone makes an API call. So the API call uh, reaches the API server and what the API server does is all it does is basically it uh, puts the message onto the AMQ, MQ bus. So that MQ bus that you see in the middle is a dedicated MQ bus for DN, uh, for designate. That's different from the other messaging buses. And when that, when the so the API call uh, gets to the API server, and the API server puts the message on the MQ bus, and then the central uh, component is responsible to consume that message, and it basically makes changes to DNS and the DB. So let's say, for instance, if someone call, makes a call for a record creation, it goes to the API. First, it, uh, the API module will put the message onto the MQ bus, the central will consume it, and it will make changes to DNS and DB. Similarly, what Sync is responsible is it's responsible for listening on um, notifications from Nova, from Neutron, or from other components, and then it will basically put uh, l consume those messages and will create new messages and put it back on the MQ bus. And central, just like it would consume messages from API, uh, from the API server, it will consume messages or from the MQ bus that the sync puts uh, onto the MQ bus as well. So that's what Central does, and uh, and it changes DN, it changes all the data in the DB as well as the DNS name server. Um, so let's. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about is a use case uh, for domains uh, in eBay. Um, I wanted uh, so basically so, so the way designate is designed is that every tenant. Um, can have as can have multiple domains. So a tenant can create domains and delete domains. So in in case of um, designate, so for domains is uh, for uh, for those who are not familiar with domains, domains is actually zones in DNS servers. So in DNS servers, there are zones, and here they are called domains. So anyone uh, in a, so any tenant, uh, any user that's part of a tenant um, can create zones, uh, can create uh, domains. They can manage domains. They can delete domains. Uh, but the way uh, we have it in uh, eBay and PayPal is uh, since it's a, so since our customers are since it's a private cloud, our customers and our tenants are mainly business units, and our business. So we we didn't want our business units to go ahead and create domains. So what we have is we don't allow all users to create domains. So all users of tenants can cannot create domains. So what we have done is basically we have created a logical construct called VPC, which uh, stands for Virtual Private Cloud. What we have is we have a group of logical domains. Uh, I'm sorry, we have a group of logical tenants that we group into one VPC. And each of this uh, VPC has one admin tenant that can manage domains. So that way, uh, what we have is uh, we have these multiple VPCs, and each VPC has one um, tenant that's the admin tenant that is that can manage the domain. So that's how we have it uh, at eBay and PayPal. <coughs> so that's one change we had to make to designate. Um, and the second change that we had to make is uh, adding handlers. Uh, so out of the box, I think designate does not come with a. Sync does not come with a lot of handler implementation. It just comes with a framework, and you sort of have to build handlers on top of that. So the first handler that we build is the NOAA handler. So the NOAA handler uh, is basically what it does is whenever any uh, instance is created or whenever any instance is deleted in NOAA, it actually puts a message onto the bus. Um, and uh, the sync notification handler will consume that message. So it will listen to an instance.create.end event and instance.delete.end event. So that, that end actually means that, uh, so like the way it's, it's a standard thing where in NOAA and in other components also, whenever, uh, uh, whenever a flow is started, it will sort of send, end up, it will put a notification that says event type dot start, and it, when it ends, it will say event type dot end. So when we listen to end, we actually know that the event is completed. So when VM creation is completed, it says instance.create.end is the message that you see on the message bus. So the sync notification handler will listen for that message. And on deletion, it will listen for instance.delete.end. So, uh, so when, when the sync notification handler sees these two messages, what it does is it goes ahead and creates a and PTR records. So what it does is sync will actually 
create a message for A record and create a message for PTR record and we'll put it onto the bus and the center will consume it. So um, the, the notification handler, the way it's designed is when we actually, um, when NOVA creates the instance, it, um, it makes sure that it has these pieces on the message. So it's part of the message metadata. So we have the domain name. So we need to know the domain name on which uh, we need to create the A record. Uh, we also need to know the host name of the VM. So we'll use that as, so we'll use the host name uh, and we need the uh, IP address. So we use the IP address um, and the host name and uh, the domain name to create an A record and then, and the PTR record. The other thing that we do is we also store the instance ID in the database. So the instance ID is the ID that NOAA keeps track of uh, what instance it is. So we keep that also in the designated database. So when the reason why we keep that is when an instance is deleted, uh, uh, a message is put on, so NOAA puts a message onto the RabbitMQ bus saying that an instance is deleted. But at that time, all we have is the instance ID. We don't have the IP address, we don't have the host name, we don't have domain name, we don't have any of the information. So what we do is, uh, we look up the designated database to find out which instance ID is trying to get deleted and accordingly we'll look at all the records, the A record and the PTR record that match that instance ID and accordingly we'll delete that. So that's why we keep track of the instance ID. So this is how we handle uh, VM creation and VM deletion and designate, uh, we create A and PTR records for that. Uh, the next thing is that we added is we added a neutron handler. So when we say neutron handler, what we did is uh, uh, at, at eBay and PayPal, what we have is we use LBAS. So LBAS is a component that uh, is part of Neutron at an, and it is used to create and delete web spools and entities. So when, when someone calls the Neutron LBAS API to create a web, what we do is um, Neutron actually puts a message onto the bus saying that a web has been successfully created. And in that case, what we do is we uh, we specify the VIP address, the IP address, and the VIP name that the consumer wants, and the VIP domain name. So that's the domain name for the VIP. So, so we put all of that uh, in the message, and what what Sync does is basically it consumes that message, and what it will do is it will create A and PTR records for the VIPs, and when someone tries to delete, uh, calls a delete VIP API, what uh, what Sync does is basically what uh, what Neutron does is basically it will put, sim similarly it will put a delete message onto the bus and then sync notifier will consume that message and will it will automatically delete the A and PTR record as well. That's corresponding to the web. So that's the Neutron enhancements that we made. C name creations. So the default designate behavior is, as we mentioned earlier, is domains are owned by tenants and user under that tenants create the domains. Uh, the users and tenants, uh, the users belonging to that tenant can only create records under that domain. So AA, PTR, CNAME records can only be created by users of that tenant that, uh, that have created uh, in the domains that that tenant owns. But um, our, in our case at eBay and PayPal, what our requirement was is that specifically for CNAMEs, uh, we wish to create CNAMEs such that um, a tenant A can create a CNAME for an A record that is created by tenant B in a different domain. So we had that requirement. So what we had to do is we had to uh, add new extensions to the API where, uh, where we could, um, where CNAME creation was allowed by any user for any domain. So that is the announcement that we had to make. Import zones. So, so whenever, uh, so, so, uh, as we saw in the earlier slides, our proprietary eBay, PayPal DNS as a service used uh, the DNS as a source of truth. It didn't have its own local database for source of truth. But with Designate, it's a little different. What Designate does is it has its own database which is used as a source of truth and it also, uh, so it updates at two places. As we saw in the architecture diagram, it updates the DNS server, the name server, also as well as the DB. So for all the reads, uh, what it does, it, it does not go to the DNS server, it just goes to its local database to pull up all the data for all the reads. So for that, for designate the source of truth is actually the DB. So what we had to do is when we had to migrate from 
uh, proprietary eBay, uh, PayPal, DNS server, DNS as a service, I'm sorry, to designate, we had to import all the data from the DNS server into, um, into the database, into the designate database. So for that, what designate has is they have an API for import zone. We tried using that API, excuse me, we tried using that API, but uh, the way the API is designed is it writes one record at a time. So the way it is, it is designed is it reads one record from the DNS name server, and it will write one to the database. It will do that a lot, it will do that one at a time. So uh, at eBay and PayPal, we have a lot of zones, and each zones have thousands and thousands of records. So, some, so, this, so the API call would take several days. And it would um, and it would fail a lot. So, so since it was the case, what we did is we developed our own tool called Fast Import. And what that Fast Import does is it will read all the records uh, in the domain at once. So it will go domain by domain. It will read all the record for a given domain at once. It will write all the records to the database. Uh, and what it will also do is uh, when it reads all the records from the database. Uh, from the domain and writes to the database, what it will also do is it will go to the NOAA database and try to find the instance ID and save that and designate. And so the, if you looked at, uh, if, if we, we discussed about this thing a few slides ago where, uh, where when designate creates, uh, when, when designate listens to notifications from NOAA, it stores the instance ID so that it's easier for it to delete the corresponding NPTR records. Uh, looking up the instance ID. So what we wanted to do is when we import the data from the DNS server, we also wanted to make sure that we correlate all the A and PTR records that we import to the instance ID in the NOAA and save that in designate. So after the migration, what we wanted is once we have switched over completely to designate, we wanted all the delete calls to go through successfully. So that, so that's the reason why what we did is the import tool also actually did that. The other thing that Invoke tool does is there is also a sync uh, API, sync domain API. Um, so basically, uh, Designate has an API where you call and you say this is the domain you want to sync. So it will sync that uh, between the uh, between the database and uh, the name server. So what we do is during the migration, we migrate the database, we correlate. Um, the data between uh, the designate database and the NOAA database, and then we call the sync domain API to sync the data from the database to the name server. So that way, both the systems are in sync. Uh, challenges with designate Juno. So when we were when we migrated from, so this was the migration. Uh, so once we finished the migration, and now we were on Juno. Uh, what we had is uh, we started taking production traffic, and this is uh, we ran into a few issues. Uh, one of the issues that we ran into is the database concurrency issue. Uh, so the concurrency issue is basically uh, the the way we uh, the concurrency issue is when two messages uh, when designate central uh, has to process two messages, either it's for A or PTR, but if they are for the same domain. What would happen is that we would see database deadlocks. So this issue, uh, we had this one issue. The second issue is the import zone designate API is very slow. We looked at it at a previous slide on why it is very slow. But this was the second issue that we found. Um, and CNAME creations, we discussed that also. Basically, CNAME creations were not supported. So these were the challenges that we faced. Uh, I would like to double click on the database uh, issue. So the next slide, we'll look at that. So what we did is uh, we did a lot of load testing. What we did is we came up with a load testing tool to reproduce this database concurrency issue. So uh, the way we did the load testing is uh, we, we made API calls uh, to designate at the same time. because. If you look at it, designate central is where the problem was. Designate central gets requests from uh, from the message bus, but the message bus uh, gets it from two places. One is from the API, and other is from sync. So the only way to get data from the sync uh, is to basically do NOAA boots and delete. So what we did is we had our load testing tool. Excuse me, we had our load testing tool, uh, which made API calls as well as at the same time what it did is it issued a parallel NOAA boot and NOAA delete commands. And we wrote the tools such that we could configure and uh, configure how many number of concurrent calls we want to make at the same time. So we did that and then we found out a few things. So one thing we found out is we were able to reproduce the database concurrent issue within three threads. So when when there were three messages uh, that sync, uh, I'm sorry, central had to process at the same time, uh, we ran into concurrency issues. and. The root cause of the issue is um, 
is there's a field called serial number on on the um, the domain table. So it's on the domain table. There's a uh, there's a field called serial number, and that serial number is is the same number that you see on a DNS server zone. So that number gets, I think, incremented each time when you update anything on the zone or the domain. Uh, so what what the designate does is it increments it in the database and it will increment it on your DNS server also. And what happens is that um, once, uh, so if you have two if you have two changes for the same domain, what it's going to happen is uh, it's going to try to increment the serial number at the same time. So that causes deadlock because each time when you update uh, increment the serial number, it has to lock the row in the database. But if you are two guys trying to do that, you will have to. Uh, there'll be a deadlock. So this is why the deadlock was caused. Uh, so the fix for the database concurrency is uh, there are various backend DNS servers, and some backend DNS servers use the serial number, some DNS servers don't use the serial number. So the backend database property server that we use does not use the serial number. So what we did is, uh, for us, a quick workaround fix was to not update the serial number. So that is one option. So if your backend database does not update the serial number and is not needed, uh, you won't have to uh, worry about it. You just have to s make sure that your code does not update the increment the serial number. S but certain backend DNS servers, what they do is they require the serial number to be updated, like bind and bower DNS. They require them to be updated. So the fix for that is actually in designate kilo. So if you upgrade to designate kilo, uh, this uh, this problem uh, this problem it doesn't come because they have rewritten the way they update the database. Uh, future work. So, uh, future work is basically we want to adapt Kilo and Liberty. Uh, there are a few changes that uh, enhancements that we need to make uh, beyond Kilo and Liberty. We have created blueprints for them, and we have shared it with the community uh, on Launchpad. So, one of the blueprints that we have created is uh, IXFR support. So, currently, uh, what happens is that. Um, uh, uh, the uh, the changes between DNS and the slaves are uh, the, are propagated via AXFR. So AXFR actually means that you sync the entire zone, and IXFR is incremental zone transfer. So what happens is that with the full zone transfers, uh, if your zone is very big, it will take a really long time to sync. So let's say if your zone has thousands of records, you don't want to do a full sync each time anything changes on the zone or the domain. So for that, we need IXFR support. So we have created a blueprint for IXFR support. The other thing that we have is granular access to at various levels. So right now, um, the granular access is at the tenant level. So basically, if a tenant creates a domain, uh, all the users of that tenant can do anything with that domain, like create A records, delete A records, you know, change anything. But what we would like to do is basically we would like to have more granular access. We would like to have granular access uh, at domain level itself. We want to say that only even if this tenant has these many domains, excuse me, we don't want all the users to have access to all the domains. So we want domain level access. We want record type access also. So we just want to say that uh, Certain users can create C names, but they cannot create A records and PTR records. So we want uh, record tab level access also. What also we want is we want access at uh, record name and record value level. So let's say, for instance, if uh, your record name starts with the word test, you only want to give access uh, to certain users with that. So we have created a blueprint for that. Uh, what we have done is basically the blueprint has um, a very powerful feature uh, where you actually have an API on designate to specify the exact role by a regular expression. So we have that uh, blueprint in in uh, the community. And, and the next thing we want is transaction support. So we would like to have APIs which basically you could create, um, for a given domain, you would, could create A, P, T, R, C name records at the same time, but we want we want transaction support. So basically, what we would like to have is we would um, you could uh, if we could create a PTRC name all those records at the same time, multiple of those, and if any one of them fails, you just want to roll back everything. So we have a blueprint for that as well. Um, so yeah. So we have so that's it. So we have any questions?
thank you very much. Uh, oh. Thank you very much. And I want to know the, about the, the motivation of to use uh, Designate because that, that is a, a incubated project. And why? Uh, what is mm. the motivation to no, use? No, Designate that? is actually used in production by a lot of. Uh, do you want to add? By a lot of companies, actually. Uh, can you want to add to that? Yeah, I think you know. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if some folks from HP, what I heard actually they're already using in production. So of course there are some local patches that I did talk to HP team as well. But uh, you know most of the fixes are in kilo. So if you are going to be in kilo, I think uh, you know we'll be in better off. Yeah. So a lot of companies are you know using it really. Yeah. Specifically, and, and most of the folks in, involved in designate are from you know Rackspace and HP, and uh, we also you know contributed a bunch of code to that. Yeah, of course it's not in upstream, you know, right? Because uh, if you look at what Kunal explained, to make it operationalize, actually, it's not a trivial task of you know just go and take it and then put it into production. Like any other OpenStack component, you know, when we started and sometime in you know SX until SX, I don't know you know how many people worked on SX, but it's it's a lot of firefighting. Still a lot of firefighting, but it's definitely better than those days. So we are still in those days. But it's not an option that's, because you know if you start early, your migration path will be less. For example, you know we have unified DNS that we wrote it internally three years back when we architected. Actually, we had three different DNS infrastructure. Our goal was to bring all this DNS infrastructure into common API, so that actually you don't care whether you are using Bind or you know any other vendor or any other DNS solution. We have you know multiple you know different IT organizations. They have their own DNS infrastructure. But when you want to do some automation between you know different environments, it was nightmare for us. Okay, well this tool works with this environment, that tool works with that environment. Our platform service is working on something else, so we wanted to unify all of that. So that itself took us you know more than two years to converge everything. Now, you know we wanted to be on open APIs. If you are moving away from our unified DNS, then a lot of people are asking questions: Why the hell actually are moving away from whatever we wrote it? It's already established. Only motivation for that for us actually we wanted to be on open API. So that actually, you know, we continue to move that path, even though actually the migration is going to be painful for us. Uh, we wanted to adopt early, so that uh, you know we are not catching up very, very late in the game. And also, you know, some of the use cases that uh, you know Kunal talked about, they are mission critical use cases. For example, you know, uh, we got some you know global load balancing, and it has its own records as well. Now there are some local whips in the load balancers. We want to move to you know global load balancing. So what we want to do is actually, you know, they're all public internet facing customers are using it. And if you want to move all these endpoints to a common place, and then you have to immediately delete and then add it to the public load balancing. So if you do A and PTR separately, there will be an outage. And every minute, every second counts for us in terms of revenue. So what is the feature for that? That DNS API is very critical for us. So what we want to do, identify all these mission critical APIs and you know put it in the community first, because it's not only useful for only EB and PayPal. It will be useful every other company they are running mission critical applications in the cloud. So if you are not if you are running maybe you know a simple dot com application, it doesn't matter for you. But uh, if you are really really running a mission critical application, if you are talking about you know four nine of your application availability, you know when you do maintenance, these are all very very critical for anyone to catch up in the community early. Better bring up all your application architectures and then what it needs everything into you know uh, your APIs so that it will be easier for you to you know, manage all those layers later. So so don't think that actually you know incubated projects a lot of you know. Many incubated projects are, you know, uh, even Nova is incubated at some point, right? So that's why we looked at it. Thank you. So the question is, what is the usage rate that we have? So the usage rate for uh, the control plane or the data plane? I guess for, for the control plane, how many updates and so on do you typically Okay, so I actually. So we typically, you know, see, we have, uh, you know, of course, in eBay and PayPal, you know, it's around, you know, 20 year old company. And then we have so many automations before even, you know, OpenStack, everything came to our infrastructure, right? And also, you know, we are moving everything from our you know, existing infrastructure and from first version of our cloud into the new version. And if you look at, you know, the existing version where OpenStack is running, the footprint might look like, you know, around 10,000 hypervisors or whatever. But, uh, you know, the rate of change for that is around, uh, I would say, people are creating around, you know, 200, 300, you know, VMs per, uh, you know, uh, I would say 10 to 15 minutes. So that many changes are happening across infrastructure. 
basically you know if you look at uh, you know all the developers right every day they come in they create you know ca ca cd and then they will be doing bunch of test on hadoop and what not right they are creating and deleting vms and what not so all these records are going through you know dns apis today and some of the most of them are in the proprietary that kunal talked about the dns as a service where we call it as unified dns service and uh, the idea is actually identify each and every zone from that particular infrastructure into the new one so the one challenge with this actually you know uh, designate is a uh, stateful service and uh, dns service that we wrote actually the dns master is the source of truth it was very easier for us as it's completely stateless you know we have only you know few you know states to manage specifically who is modifying what and then access controls and stuff like that but uh, designate is completely in a source of truth actually so even we have a lot of we are going to have a lot of challenges basically you know if you are talking about you know your mysql database as a source of truth for you know across the region across the globe you want to manage your dns infrastructure there are a lot of engineering needs to be done so how is the your replication pattern across you know regions and globe uh, all over the world so unless otherwise you have your galera cluster that is being you know scaled across it's going to be very very you know tough to you know migrate all your existing you know infrastructure into this and of course we are approaching by you know non mission critical you know zones into this and then slowly migrating one by one by taking time to you know identify all these gaps and put it in the community and uh, you know migrate slowly whenever we are ready because at the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you use unified dns or you use designate our business would not get impacted that's our you know first goal and we cannot so business they, they don't care what api use in dns but it should not get affected right but at the same time we wanted to innovate in the open source as well so it's a you know it's a tough problem yeah so that's the answer to your question yes exactly yeah we will be yeah it yeah definitely so one of our engineer actually worked on that and i'll talk to him and then to uh, open we source we will make it available yeah yeah definitely yeah so so the problem with that actually you know not only for designate the problem in the community you know i talked about, i talked to, you know uh, open stack uh, technical committee also some time back where you know introduce more and more gates in the release process so i don't care if you don't deliver in a couple of features for a release but i want to put okay as much as many test cases as possible functional or you know unit test cases and performance test cases it is very big gap in the community itself say if uh, you know kilo is coming out how quality it is right so can i take it and run it in production i have to do a lot of hard work because you know every upgrade cycle takes around in a month at least in you know, one or two months of you know effort from every company to make it happen and then just take it and upgrade it in production so that gap which is still not at addressed of course you know we volunteered to provide some infrastructure to the community itself of course in, we, we will be working with cicd infrastructure team and then hp also volunteered and uh, you know we'll be working on that for sure and of course you know it's a journey it's not like you know uh, you're, you're, there's no point in complaining about community if somebody says oh community oh that doesn't work okay we are part of the community let's do something for it right yeah all right all right okay Okay, thank you. Thank you.